In the last stream, we began on a single floating block in the middle of the void, and over the course of the last episode, we managed to grow and expand that base out to include multiple of these 8x8 mystical agriculture farms to allow us to harvest dirt seeds, inferium seeds, wood seeds, and stone seeds. And between streams, what I've gone ahead and done is just continue to expand out the base using the same design language that we started in the last episode. We've got another farm ready here for our next seed, and I'm going to build three more farms along the back here with this center block not being a farm, I think I'm going to use this to put all of our stuff onto, because right now we just have this line of blocks that are kind of haphazardly placed in the middle of the platform, and I think it would be a lot nicer if we could put those on like a centralized platform in the middle of the base that's not actually a farm. So to do that, we just need to fill this in and move things over. Now, before we do that, though, I would like to look at getting some nicer blocks, because right now we have access to wood, we could put wood in here, uh, we could put dirt in here, we could put cobblestone, stone, or smooth stone in there, but we do have quite a few mods in the pack, mods like chisel and mods like chipped, that allow us to customize the look of things like stone to make them look a little bit nicer. And so what I think I'll do is harvest a bunch of stone essence. We should then be able to craft that directly into regular stone, and of course we can get more of that going forward if we need it, and then, there are two options, really. We could go with chisel. If we wanted to go with chisel, we just need to make the chisel from chisel, which is super easy. It's one stick and one iron. If we wanted to go with chipped, I think we would have to get a different kind of workbench to process our stone. These right here are the stones from chipped. In order to make those out of regular stone, we need a mason's table, which really doesn't seem too difficult. It needs one brick, one clay, two wood, one crafting table, and two iron ingots, that should be fine. Of course, right now we don't have any iron because we used all of it making buckets in the last episode. However, we do of course have access to the mining dimension now, and this dimension is just packed to the brim with ores. And so what we can do, and what we didn't do last time, is actually repair our stone pickaxe. So over here in the Tinker Station, if we put the stone pickaxe in, and if we put in some cobblestone, we can just spend two cobblestone to repair that stone pickaxe, as opposed to having to make a new pickaxe every time one breaks, which is one of the main benefits of these Tinker's pickaxes. Back over here, let's quickly mine just a little bit of iron. I cannot reach up there, that's fine. I can reach over here, of course, FDB to mine, making light work of that whole vein of ores. We'll do the same up here. And then we did, at the very end of the last episode, manage to get two buckets of water. And so we do have an unlimited water source available to us now, which is going to make it a lot easier for us to make clay going forward. And the clay, of course, has two uses here. One, we need it if we're going to make this mason's table here. But we also need it if we're going to get into a Tinker Smeltery, which is... Kind of the first goal for today's stream is going to be to set up a Tinker Smeltery because the Tinker Smeltery is what is going to allow us to upgrade our pickaxe to something like an iron pickaxe. And once we have that iron pickaxe, we can then go and start mining things like emeralds, gold, lapis, and diamonds, which is then going to allow us to make those associated seeds and push forward potentially into some sifting because the oak sieve in this pack does require a rather expensive two diamond sticks. So we need four diamonds in total before we can get into sifting but before we get too far ahead of ourselves let me do another one of these that's going to get us one more clay we're going to need a lot of clay there is no crafting recipe to craft clay back into balls that is unfortunate but we can of course take our clay here drop one of those in the furnace and as soon as that is done we should have everything that we need in order to make this mason's table we do nice and this thing looks pretty nifty as well we'll put it down maybe here for now we'll probably move this onto the platform that we're about to build but now if we go ahead and throw our stone in here we have a bunch of options as to which kind of stone we want to use all we have to do is click on a specific type of stone and then grab as much as we like if we shift click we get the whole stack and so real quick i'm going to look through a couple of these different designs here if you pick a design you don't like you can just put it back into the table and swap it for any of the other designs. And so I'm gonna take a look through some of these and see about filling in 
this platform and then moving over some of the stuff that we have over here. Okay, so I decided eventually to not go with the chipped mod, mostly because none of the textures here connect. And so if you put multiple of, for example, this stone down, they don't connect together, whereas the chiseled stone does connect together. So again, the chisel, super easy to make. And then with this, you can just throw your stone in there. Again, you can't mix and match, so you can't put in stone from chipped into the chiseled chisel. You can turn it back into stone though, and then it should work just fine in the chisel. With this one, I've gone with the stone brick dent and the stone brick in case brick, because with this one, when you put these down, they do connect together, and I think it looks quite nice. So we've got the in case brick around the outside with the dent in the middle. And so now we're gonna move everything else over before we do that though, I would like to upgrade my crafting table because right now we're using the standard vanilla Minecraft crafting table. However, if we go ahead and pick this up and we should definitely look at upgrading our hatchet here to a Tinker's Stone Axe, that's gonna make our lives a little easier, but we should be able to craft that with a blank pattern to get a crafting station, which is an upgraded version of the crafting table that is going to allow us to leave items in it when we're crafting. Now, the only annoying thing about what we've done here is that this center platform is eight by eight, which means there's no center to the platform here, which is unfortunate. Although I guess what we could do is we could just put all of our Tinker's parts in like a little two by two grid around the center. So if we do like this and this potentially, although I might even change that because one of the things I would like to do in today's stream is potentially look at getting a colossal chest. We do have the colossal chests mod installed, and so we're gonna go on a bit of a detour here, but uh, if we go back to the main quest line, there is a quest right here that says colossal chest wall, and it wants us to make one colossal chest core, which is just one colossal chest wall with one iron ingot, and then 64 colossal chest wall, which is just logs and planks. And given that we have basically an infinite amount of wood, that should be pretty straightforward for us to do. And so if we quickly grab some of our wood essence, we've got over five stacks of the stuff. We can then craft that into oak logs. We can craft those logs. Jeez, that's so many logs. We can then uh, look at crafting some of those logs into planks. And then we can look at crafting those into colossal chest wall. Once we've got 64, five of those, we can then upgrade one of those to the Colossal Chest Core by just crafting it with an iron ingot. And then I believe at that point, we have everything we need to actually build a Colossal Chest, which as the name suggests, is just a really, really, really big chest. And so if we were to put this down, let's do one, two, three, four by two, three, four like this. And we do have to put the interface down I think somewhere around there, I don't think it necessarily matters where you put it. But then if we go one, two, three, four, like this, and we build just this four by four cube fully, hollow in the middle, but all of the walls built out of colossal chest wall, I think it should form into a gigantic version of a regular Minecraft chest. Look at that. That is quite something. So wherever you put the interface, you are gonna get this little spot right here. With that in mind, I might actually just move this to the backside of the uh, the multi-block structure just to make it look a little nicer from the front. Oh no, never mind. Okay, I see. So wherever you put the interface, that is automatically the front of the chest. Okay, so never mind. In that case, then let's go ahead and take this out. Let's put it right about here. I think that's a little bit nicer. And so now we have this giant chest that should be capable of storing basically all of our stuff. We shouldn't have to worry about having a ton of double chests. You can make this even bigger. I'm not quite sure what the maximum size is here, but you can see that we've got a ton of space in this chest compared to a standard Minecraft chest. We could have if we wanted to make this even bigger, but I quite like the look of this in the center here. It does kind of take up the entirety of that center platform though, which is less than ideal, but I think that's mostly Fine. I think what I might do now then is grab the crafting station and maybe just embed these in the floor. I might put them right about here. So we'll do like the crafting station. We can also do the tinker station along with the part builder. 
And the nifty thing about these, because they're all from Tinker's Construct, if you open up any one of them, you can then access any of the others via the tabs along the top here. So long as they're all touching each other, these tabs will appear and you can just flick between them, which is real nice, real nifty. It's gonna save us a good bit of time. And so now I'm not gonna move the campfire because we might need that and we don't currently have what it takes to make a new one. I probably can move the mining dimension teleporter. We could always make a new one if it, you know, for some reason broke or something, but I think that's fine. Let's put that for now right about here, although I think we are gonna end up making another tinker station that I'll probably end up putting here in the future. The furnace is gonna go somewhere. For now, we'll put it here, and ideally I'd get another one and put it there just for the symmetry. Although, one thing we can do, again, over here there is a quest for the Jumbo Furnace, which is kind of a similar idea to the Colossal Chest, in that we can make a gigantic furnace that smelts a ton of items at once. And that might not be a terrible idea. To make it, we do need 27 regular furnaces, and that's just going to require a bunch of smooth stone and a bunch of cobblestone. Annoyingly, you can't craft smooth stone using the stone essence, but what we can do, of course, is just get a bunch of stone essence, craft that into regular stone, and then smelt that into smooth stone using either the furnace, but also the campfire does work, and the campfire is also pretty fast. I did accidentally craft all of that into cobblestone when I wanted to craft the smooth stone. There we go. But let's throw a stack of that in there with some fuel, and then we can also do some over here as well, and we will get ourselves enough to make 26 more regular furnaces, which is 78 smooth stone, so just over a stack. Okay, so a ton of smooth stone later. Let's grab some of that cobblestone we made earlier, and let's craft up uh, a bunch more. We need even more cobblestone, eh? that's fine. Let me uh, sort this. You can click the middle mouse button to automatically sort all of your chest and then boom and boom that's 27 furnaces so now the question is where do we want to put this the twitch chat was suggesting just directly on top of the colossal chest wall which is an option we could potentially reach it from down here alternatively though what i think might look just a little bit nicer and a little bit less insane while still being a little bit insane might be to put it above the colossal chest but potentially just on a second story so if we do this and potentially this what we should be able to do is maybe build up a little bit our pre-existing walls because i've put down these pillars the idea being that we're going to make this taller at some point point. and so if we go one two three four and then maybe five like this and then if we look at connecting those up three four five i think what i'll do we've got five there i think i'll go six and that'll be the block that we build off from. So if we do this, we could potentially then have a second floor to this center level that we can then use as a space for the Colossal Furnace. Something like this is what we're thinking here. So now I will almost certainly end up putting a an actual floor in here, but just as a proof of concept, let's do something like this. So we're gonna put down a three by three. Oh, this is a four by four. So that's again, a little annoying because it doesn't actually fit. Somebody in the Twitch chat suggested building four of these, which you know what might not be a terrible idea. I think it's gonna be massive overkill, but in terms of symmetry, it would work. So if we did something like this, where we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we go ahead and build that up into a three by three cube that is just solid furnace throughout the multi-block, as soon as we place the last one down, this forms, whoops, into a jumbo furnace, which is capable of smelting a ton of items. And while not currently faster than a regular furnace, we can make this faster in the future. So the idea here is that we could just load up nine stacks of cobblestone into here. We can also load up nine stacks of fuel into here, and that's gonna slowly but surely smelt all of the stuff. So we can just load up a ton of stuff and it will get smelted. And in the future, if we go to uh, at Jumbo Furnace in JEI, there are these ortho dimensional hyper furnace upgrades that you can place into the Jumbo Furnace to increase the number of items that it smelts. They are a little pricey. They do require ender pearls that we don't currently have. Although one of the things we're going to do within the first few episodes of this series is set up a mob farm. And so hopefully ender pearls are not too far away. If I'm not mistaken, the way it works is that putting one of these into the Jumbo Furnace increases the number that is smelted 
per operation from one to two, and you can put up to a stack of these into the jumbo furnace. And if you do, every time the bar fills up, it will smelt a stack of items, which is pretty nifty. All right, so I've moved this down by one so that we can access it from the floor here. And I think we will make a few more of these. If we really wanted to, we could make, you know, three more of them and put one in each corner, potentially. We're smelting some more stone here, so we have that option in the future. But uh, let's go ahead and let's see if we can't get this Tinker's Smeltery up and running. So if we want to make a Tinker's Smeltery, there are a few things we want to get. And thankfully, there's a quest line that guides us through it over here. The first, of course, is clay. So we do have our bucket in here. Let me grab that. And we also have a bunch of sand and a bunch of gravel. We are going to need even more sand and gravel. Thankfully, that is where our hammer comes in. That hammer is going to make getting sand and gravel easier because as we saw last episode, we can turn cobble into gravel, gravel into sand and sand into dust. So let's go ahead and get a little bit more in the way of dust here. We'll do something like that. As soon as we have five iron, we can then set up a bit of a hopper. Uh, the idea being that we can potentially automate a little bit at least the production of clay here, because right now we're taking water, putting it in, adding in the dust and taking out the clay. And we need to keep doing that, getting a bunch of clay. We're then gonna craft that clay with sand and gravel. Uh, thankfully you can craft this with the clay block. That gets us grout. And we are going to need a lot of grout. So let's make our first batch here to complete the quest. That gets us 16. And each one of these can be smelted into one seared brick. The seared brick is the foundation of the Tinker Smeltery. It's needed to make basically every other component of the smeltery. Those components are the controller. We're going to need one of these. This does require that we have molten copper and pull it over a seared heater, which makes me think that if we go to at Tinkers, that we do have... I think we need this first, the seared melter then, because I think the seared melter is what's going to allow us to make the molten copper that we can then use to get a seared heater. I assume that copper ore is something that we can find in the mining dimension. We've not seen any thus far, but we've also not really done too much in the way of exploration. This is not too difficult. It does require five glass, so let's get a little bit of glass smelting in there. We're also going to need glass in order to make a seared fluid tank. That one just requires the one glass, and I think that's basically all the glass we're going to need for the smeltery, so I'll put that fifth sand in there. And while we wait for that to smelt up, let's head on back through and let's see if we can't find a little bit of copper in the mining dimension just as soon as we repair our stone pickaxe. Here we go, not too far away from our little spawn area. There is some copper there. I do also hear what sounds like mobs. There's also even more copper here, which I will take. I uh, was looking at JEI, and JEI does mention certain Y levels for copper ore. Right here it says 30 to 60, but I don't know if that's accurate. I think the mining dimension has like its own rule set in terms of ore generation, as you can see just by the staggering amount of ores that we found here. There's also even more copper ore right there, actually. And uh, here is where we spawned in. Obviously, now that we've moved the portal, uh, we've actually moved over to here. So our old portal was down there, our new portal is over here so it, uh, it does relate to wherever you put it in the overworld once we have at least five glass we should be able to make that melter of course we do also have to smelt the grout as well up here we are getting there slowly but surely on the, uh, the smooth stone it would be nice to make this a lot faster one thing we probably can do the uh, the jumbo furnaces are good for smelting a large number of items but one thing that i think we should be able to do is upgrade our current furnace here to an Inferium Furnace, which has a cooking speed of 120%. So it's basically 20% faster than the default furnace. And it basically just requires a bunch of Inferium, along with some Inferium ingots, which do require us Prosperity ingot, but the Prosperity ingot is just Prosperity shards and iron. So if we do something like this with two iron ingots in the middle and then the Prosperity shards around it, we can make two Prosperity ingots. And then from there, if we grab a little bit of Inferium Essence, we should have more, as soon as we eat here, over in our storage drawer, although it's almost certainly just faster for us to harvest a fresh batch like that. And then over here, let's do something like this to get two Inferium ingots, and let's also do something like this to get the block of Inferium that we can then use to craft up the Inferium Furnace. So we'll place that down like this, and that should be essentially the same as a regular Minecraft Furnace, but just 20% faster. 
And going forward, if we get Prudentium Essence, we can make a Prudentium Furnace, and then a Tertium Imperium, and then Supremium, which is 4,000% cooking speed, which is like 40 times faster than a default furnace. And once we have nine seared brick, we should then be able to make a seared gauge. And then from there, we should be able to craft our seared melter. Nice. Now, as it says here, it says first smeltery place above a tank or heater to fuel. So I think we're probably going to want to get a heater because the tank is almost certainly going to require lava, whereas the seared heater can use solid fuel sources. This does require eight more seared brick, which is unfortunately more than we're going to get here. Thankfully, we do, of course, have yet more water that we can use to make yet more clay, and we can use yet more clay to make yet more grout to smelt into yet more seared brick. Boom, there's 32 more grout. Let's get that smelting. We just need one more, and that's going to get us everything for the heater. Boom, there's our seared heater. And so uh, we'll put this down temporarily, like right about here, because this is not going to last too long. We're just going to use this to make the controller, and then we'll use the controller to set up a, a full smeltery, potentially behind this. What I might do is set up another platform here that's not a farm, and uh, we might use this platform as well as kind of a general purpose place to put stuff like the smeltery. So in here, what we can do is we can place regular fuel. I assume that wood will work if I put that in here. I think that's right. And then in the top slot, we should be able to put some copper. We can. The idea here being that we're then going to get four ingots worth of copper, which we might get from these chunks here. So one chunk gets you 1.3 ingots. You'll see it says in smeltery and then in melter. We're using the melter right now, which means each one of these chunks is going to get us the equivalent of one ingot and three nuggets worth. Each one is going to give those three nuggets and that adds up to a fourth ingot. So we have four ingots worth of copper. And so now we need to get ourselves a faucet, which is crafted like this. And we need to get ourselves a basin, which is just eight seared brick. It's crafted like this with one here. And then that can go anywhere next to the heater we then want the seared faucet on the melter itself and then now if we want to craft the smeltery controller we just need to place a seared heater into this casting basin and pull copper over it so what we can do here is we can break this heater that we just put down place it into this casting basin and then right click the faucet to pull the molten copper over it and that is going to make for us the smeltery controller Nice. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make some more grout because we're going to need a lot of it. And then while I wait for that grout to smelt up, I'm going to build out the next platform back here to get us some space for the smeltery. All right. And not too long later, we have a new platform here for our smeltery. And we also have a good number of seared bricks as well. So let's craft up some seared bricks, like the block version of the item like this. And we're going to try building our smeltery over in this area here. So what we're going to do, we're going to place down our smeltery controller right about here. We can make this bigger in the future if we want. And then the smeltery is going to look a little something like this. So it's going to go this far back. I think you can make non-symmetrical smelteries, although we could if we wanted to just make it symmetrical so you don't have to put blocks on the corners you can just do it like this and then you'd have to put one here either you can just do it like that and so to start with we'll see about making this kind of two by two internal smeltery and see how that plays out if it ends up being too small for us we can always look at making it bigger in the future so we're going to need a ton of this seared brick uh, we're also going to need to make the seared tank that i showed off earlier that's what we have the glass for that shouldn't be too difficult for us to do and uh, we're also going to need at least one seared drain as well which we can grab in just a second but the basic premise is that it's going to look a little something like this uh, the floor here does need to be seared brick as well so let's replace these four bits of stone with seared brick like so and that's the general premise of the smeltery and you'll see it has formed into a smeltery and uh, if we wanted to we could make it taller to give it more slots but this is a smeltery it's just not a very good one in order for it to actually function as a smeltery, we do need that aforementioned tank, which looks something like this. This is going to allow the smeltery to burn lava to actually melt our ores. So let's put that right about here on the bank. 
And then what I think we'll do from there is get potentially at least two seared drains. The seared drains here are just four seared brick and two copper, and those are going to allow us to pull out any molten liquids we have. We've already got the casting basin, and we already have two seared faucets, which is perfect. And so what I think we will do is not go through to the mining dimension. Instead, we'll put a little bit more fuel into here to get that smelting just a little bit faster. And while we wait for that to smelt, our smooth stone has been coming in slowly but surely. And so I think I'm gonna go ahead and build a few more jumbo furnaces. All right, so a little bit of copper later, we have built two more jumbo furnaces up here, which again are not faster than the inferior furnace just yet, but we can upgrade them very soon once we get a mob farm to hopefully make them faster and they are good for smelting a large number of items which i'm hopeful is going to come in useful later on down the line for now if we do something like this we can make our first of ideally two seared drains and then if we take the other copper that we have here we can do the same again two copper and four seared brick gets us another drain and then we're also going to go ahead and make the opposite of the casting basin and that being the casting table we're going to need both of these going forward and so what we'll do over on i was gonna say over on the left side but what i might do just for the sake of symmetry is put one seared drain here and put the second seared drain right about here we can then put the casting basin on the right side and the casting table on the left side both of these need a faucet boom and boom and now our smeltery is good to go. Now we can actually put things into the smeltery and then pull them out either into the casting table or into the casting basin. So if we're going to make an iron pickaxe, I think we might be able to make a Minecraft iron pickaxe. We totally can. And so that is obviously the easiest way of moving forward here. If we get uh, another set of sticks, we should be able to make just a regular Minecraft iron pickaxe, which is fine for now, but not ideal going forward. If we take that into the mining dimension, we need to find some gold. Because if we can find some gold, and speaking of the mining dimension, I could really do with more torches. Thankfully, there is a bunch of coal nearby, and we have a bunch of wood. So making more torches is going to be fairly straightforward here. But if we can get some gold, then we can look at making the pickaxe head gold cast, which is what we need if we want to make a metal pickaxe head, such as an iron pickaxe head, that we can then use going forward to mine and repair without having to make a new pickaxe every single time our old one breaks. We do have diamonds here, might as well take those and might as well use the ultra mine here to get all of those. Uh, same is true with the redstone, might as well grab some of that as well. I do wanna make sure I don't use all of the durability on my pickaxe though before we find gold because the gold really is the key thing that we need if we're gonna get a better Tinker's pickaxe. Here we go, there is some gold and there's even more gold down here and more diamonds as well. We found quite a few diamonds actually, surprisingly quickly. Very happy that we didn't actually lose that there. Uh, we do need to bring some lava back with us. And so although it's a little inefficient, I am just gonna get a bucket made and then steal a bucket of lava here. We can obviously come back and uh, get more lava very easily going forward because we do have lava right by our spawn portal. Uh, let's use this portal to go back because that's the one we came through by. And then now, if we take some of these gold chunks. We should be able to put those into the smeltery. And I think just one is all we're going to need here because unlike in the melter before, and by the way, the lava just goes in the fuel tank, unlike before where we were only getting 1.3 ingots of gold for every chunk, now that we have a fully fledged smeltery, we get two ingots worth of gold for every gold chunk we put in. And if we want to make a pickaxe head gold cast, we need just the one ingot actually. So that is completely fine. What we want to do here is come back over to the pot builder, put in some patterns, and make a cobblestone pickaxe head. Then we can take that and place it into our casting table, and if we pull the molten gold over that, that should make a pickaxe head cast. It did fantastic. And then from there, if we put some iron in here, if we want to make an iron pickaxe head, that is just two ingots worth of iron, which we're gonna get from this one copper chunk, no we're not, if we put the iron in instead, that is gonna melt into two ingots worth of iron, and then we should be able to pull that over the pickaxe head cast here, and in doing so, that is going to solidify into the iron pickaxe head, and then I'm fairly certain that we should be able to upgrade our pre-existing stone pickaxe here with 
that iron pickaxe head. So we can click on this in here to move it to the bottom. You'll know which uh, material you're about to pull out by the color of the drain. And if we right click, that's gonna pull out the iron into the cast. And then once that has cooled, we can take it out and then back over in the Tinker's station, we should be able to craft our old pickaxe with the new pickaxe head. And that's gonna upgrade it from stone to iron. And now we can use that as our iron pickaxe going forward in the mining dimension. And whenever we want to repair it, we can repair this by just putting iron into the Tinker's station. And another important factor here is that we have three upgrade and one ability slots here. So if I were to put, for example, a diamond on here, that upgrades the mining level from iron to diamond. So it's gonna act like a diamond pickaxe. It's gonna be able to mine obsidian. Its mining speed is gonna go up from six to seven. Tech damage also goes up. Its durability almost quadruples from 200 to 800. And it's just overall a good upgrade, the diamond on the pickaxe. We can also put, for example, redstone on here. Every little bit of redstone that we add increases the mining speed. So by default, it's seven. If I were to add some redstone to this, the more redstone I add, the more the mining speed goes up. And you'll see that we did use one of our upgrades putting the diamonds on. But uh, if we want to put redstone on, you can add up to 45 before it takes a second upgrade. So the first 45 redstone count as one upgrade. And then if you want to add even more redstone, that will lead into the second upgrade. So let's put a little bit of redstone on here. I think a faster pickaxe is going to be well worth it. We might as well go for the full 45. We do only have 39 for the time being, but that shouldn't be a problem. Let's have a look. We do have more redstone down here. If I go ahead and grab that, that's four more. I need like one more redstone here. Boom. And here we go. So now if we go up to 45, that uses up all of those slots. And then if we wanted to add more, that would take away our last upgrade there. But we could do it if we wanted an even faster pickaxe. For now, this is fine. I think we could also, yeah, if we wanted to, we could add an emerald to this as well, which would take our durability up even further. But I don't really think it's necessary, especially given that if we really wanted to, we could just make another tinker station, carry that around with us in the mining dimension. And so long as we have iron ingots on us, we can just go ahead and do this and this as many times as we like in the mining dimension to continually refresh our pickaxes durability. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of Mystical Block. Next time we'll come back and we will look, I think initially at getting some sieves. Once we get sieves, we can then start sifting some dirt to get seeds, which is gonna solve our food problem because we are quickly running out of bread, which is gonna be a problem. And we'll also look at getting enough of each of these resources to actually start crafting their seed form and then using those to grow just a ton of diamonds, lapis, gold, emeralds, etc. That shouldn't be too difficult, but those are all problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of Mystical Block there.